My mind doesn't compute the current word for that. And they're abusing it. So, uh, and, and no one could do anything about it because the federal guidelines are so stringent that they get sued. That's all. It's that simple. Tom on WMAL, tell us your service animal horror story. Savage, it's an honor. Uh, a goose. Uh, the ge I'm, a, I'm an airline. <laughs> Stop it. I, did you say, are you a pilot? Does it say you're a pilot of the plane? Yes, yes. I'm the pilot of the plane. The gate agent came down and said, I need some assistance. I've never seen this before. You know, obviously, we have two pilots in the cockpit. Uh, we both went up there, <laughs> and uh, uh, she told us that there was a uh, passenger with a goose. And I, I, I thought this was a joke. And there was a goose with a, uh, a leash connected to a harness. A harness went around the, the whole girth of the bird, and the, and the bird was standing at her feet at the um, at the gate. And uh, you know, we're in our uniform, and I said, "Okay, what's the problem?" Well, uh, this is my service animal. I have papers. Uh, you have to let me on. And and we we looked uh, looked at her, and we said, "Well, we don't doubt the the paperwork." And as you pointed out, people can buy that online. And I don't want to take away from people that actually need service animals. But uh, I, my first question was, are you telling me you walked through the airport to get to the gate? Did the goose walk next to you? And she said, no, I, I carried it, but I'm standing here at the gate, so I put it down because it's heavy. And um, uh, I, I, uh, I looked at her, looked at the gate agent, and I said, uh, no, we're not going to accept the bird. Uh, there's a health ha hazard. There's a health issue with, with, um, with that. Of course situation. there is. They, they crap all over the plane. Well, and again, doctor, and again, uh, did you did you get did you wait a minute? So you blocked this this person with the goose, and what happened? Did she sue the airline? You know, the conversation. I didn't mean to embarrass anybody, but uh, I was presented with the situation and tried to. Keep no, it. but but captain, captain, captain. Did she then sue the airline? You need a goose to travel on an airplane. Maybe there's some other issues in play. You're not hearing me. Again, terrible board operating. Captain, did she sue the airline? Nothing. Nothing back, a one-way street. Instead of two Dixie Cups and a string, I have one Dixie Cup and a string. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. in the White House tonight celebrating the uh, return of the uh, seized assets to Iran, the, uh, shall I say, cowardice of the sailors. Iran violated the Geneva Convention by showing distressed photos of our men. Of course, we have a commander-in-chief who doesn't want to state anything about the Geneva Convention. I can't let this go. I cannot let this go. I'm sorry. There's something wrong with the whole picture. What about these Navy officers give up like this? They didn't fire a slingshot at them? Nothing? No fighting? It's the military, for God's sakes. All right, you don't want to talk about it. You want to talk about service animals, meatballs. I don't want to do meatballs. No recipes. No recipes. I don't cook anymore. I'm bored of cooking. Those days are over. I don't have the patience for any of that. Who could sit and cook? I did. Actually, I cook, though. Once a year now, I cook. Supreme Court victory you don't want to hear about. Savage wins in U.S. Supreme Court after five-year legal battle. It was on drudge for 24 hours. The whole world of intellect, uh, intellect saw it. Anyone with a brain who's into the news saw the story. Of course, uh, it's an important story for people in the media. They should understand that it applies to them as well as to me. But since they detest me, they don't even understand. They'd rather cut their nose to spite their face and make believe it's an unstory. Well, I don't need the publicity. What do I need it for? What's it going to do for me? You think the people in the media want publicity around the clock? Oh, this is a good caller. Come on. Lisa on WMAC in Georgia, you're kidding me. I got to hear this this caller. You're a flight attendant. Tell me what someone brought as a service animal. I don't believe it. Lisa, what was it? It was a bucket of fish. <laughs> oh, come on. They brought a bucket of live fish on a plane and called it a service animal? Yes, sir. <laughs> So, wait, you had to take that on the airplane? Well, it wasn't my flight, but I know for a fact that it was on a flight. <laughs> you heard about it from other flight attendants? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, uh, that's the craziest one I ever heard. <laughs> Thanks for the call. A bucket of fish. WABC, Eddie, tell us your service dog horror story. 
about two years ago, I was on a shuttle flight from Boston, New York. A lady comes on, Oli, with a uh, dog, little dog, okay? They had her before. She flies up from Boston back to New York a bunch of times. And the dog, all it does is bark and bark and bark. They told her they had to put a muzzle on it to keep her from barking. She complained, but they said either that or off the plane. They put the muzzle on. Halfway into the flight, the dog drops dead. Oh! And, okay, two months ago, what do I get? I get a letter in the mail from the airline. Me and everybody who's on the flight, all 62 of us, are summoned to be witnesses to the death of the dog. And she's suing the airline, this witch? For making them put on the muzzle, okay? They should have put a muzzle on the ma on the, on the woman. <laughs> they should put a muzzle on it now. They should have put a muzzle and a chain on Are you kidding me? See, this is what I'm talking about. Maybe her dog was near death and she did this just to have the dog muzzled and die so her, her lawyer could sue the airline. That's sickening. Our, the airline told me that there's a question as well whether this was a you know a support dog or anything, or whether the dog was a pet of hers that was so damn old, okay, that she couldn't travel with it and couldn't find a kennel. Of oh, it. I could just imagine what she looked like, but let's not go into that because people will accuse me of misogyny, which is not true. The misogynists are in ISIS, and you don't hear one word from the from the progressives about ISIS and their misogyny, do you? Not one word from the from the progressives about the misogyny of the immigrants coming to America. Then their cultures are all misogynistic. All of them. All right, that's that. What's the point of talking sense in a crazy world, huh? Sailors new. You want to talk about the sailors? Service dogs? Uh, 855 407 The flying turkey was what caught my eye. Before I go to the other calls, let me go to the, the sound. There's a piece here that I put a... Uh, ah, here it is. Our Secretary of Defense, who was the weakest looking man I've ever seen in my life, which is why he was selected by uh, Barry, has just released 10 prisoners from Guantanamo to go back to terrorism. Listen to Mr. Pink Tie, our Secretary of Defense in Clip 12. Just last night, after a deliberate and careful review, we completed <laughs> the transfer of 10 Yemenis, roughly 10%, that is, of the remaining Gitmo population, to the government of Oman. And that brings the population to 93. Like every transfer that came before it, the decision <laughs> to transfer these detainees happened only after a thorough review by me and other senior security officials <laughs> of our government. As we work diligently to close this chapter in our history, we will continue what? to, and I believe in this strongly, I'm sure you strongly, do, value strongly. and support the professionalism and the dignity of the men and women. All right, turn, turn the clown off. Turn the clown. Look at this. Look who they have in the government. In my day, a guy like Ash Carter top what he could have achieved. Maybe after 25 years, he could have moved up to salesman in a men's clothing store. And I'm not knocking it. That's not an easy job, especially around the holidays. So that's why Obama found him and made him Secretary of Defense. Another one who never fired a Daisy BB gun running the Defense Department. He's sitting up there like a stooge telling us how great it is to return 10 Yemeni murderers to... Now, where is he sending them? To, oh, Omen. That's a very reliable ally right there. I know about Onan. He should have sent them to Onan. It would have been safer than sending them to Omen. Omen. He should have sent them to Om. Omland. Berkeley, California. Omen. Omland. Omen he's sending them to. They're not going to get back to terrorism. It would be a joke. It would be a joke, but it isn't. Then Obama gave a speech today saying, is this the last thing I can squeeze out of being president? He said it again. Is this the new one or the old one? That's the old one or the new one? A new one? He gave another speech about squeezing out of the toothpaste of the presidency. Okay, here he goes again. Here's Barry squeezing in, in clip 14. That's what we have to remember. And that's the last question that we have to answer. And, and the most important one. How do we infuse those principles into our politics. And I said this yesterday and I meant it. I, I, I have really in, enjoyed being president and I'm going to squeeze every you. last thing I can get out of it over this next year. What a despicable low life. And listen, I don't want to turn this into an Obama show, but it's almost impossible not to re revolt. and no It's nauseating. It makes you want to throw up listening to this man, how he's abused the presidency. 
Let's start with one that you may or may not remember of what this despicable man has done to the presidency. It may never recover from it. Do you know that he has appointed over 72 personal assistants to his wife to cater to her every whim at your cost? He is the first president to have appointed over 70 personal assistants for his wife who has also abused the presidency. This is the first president to have gone on over 17, or is it now 18, lavish vacations. In addition to his date nights and Wednesday evening house parties for his friends from Hollywood and the record industry. Again, to have a, a party in the White House that no one is allowed to see, paid for by the taxpayers. Do you know he is the first president to fly in a personal trainer from Chicago at least once a week at taxpayer expense? Do you know he's the first president to keep a dog trainer on retainer for $102,000 a year at taxpayer expense? No wonder he wants to squeeze, squeeze everything he can get out of it over the next year. This, okay, I'll stop right there. And then he goes on today and says that he's lamenting the polarization in this country. The man has caused it. He's caused it. In clip 15, listen to this man, the toothpaste squeezer. Listen. My only big regret is, is that our parties are even more polarized. Our politics are even more rancorous than they were years Do you have any idea why? Ago. Do you know why? I, I'm going to keep on trying to do better to see if I can... Uh, help break the... You future. caused it, you creep, you! But, but, it's not going to happen unless the American people send a clear message to their elected officials... To impeach you! That that's not the kind of politics we want. You see, this is an example of a sociopathic liar. He causes the rancor, he causes the polarization. He tilts the entire country to the, to the, to the perimeters of the far left. And then he says, gee, why is it so polarized? Why is there so much rancor? I, I didn't do anything. And he, he gets away with it, so he keeps doing it and raises the stakes. And now he's mocking everyone. Now he's mocking you, saying, look what I've gotten away with, and I'm going to continue to do it, and you can't do anything about it. Ha, 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 Well, okay, that's how I see it. He has debased the presidency. Can it ever recover from him and his wife? I don't know. The parties, the abuse of power the lavish expend expenditures uh, and things of that nature, I don't know. I really don't know. So I don't want to talk about him. Please don't make me talk about him. Don't make me talk about this man. I had to play this for you because he's getting crazier by the day. The day after this, the, the address he gave, which was crazy to begin with, he doubles down and he gets crazier. Squeeze every last thing I can get out of it over the next year? I don't know why there's so much polarization. Okay. What do you have to say about ISIS? Anything he's going to do to stop them? Uh, let's hear number 16. Let's see what the great leader has to say about stopping these terrorists. Let's hear that one. Priority number one is protecting the American people and going after terrorist networks. Well, you've That's done well on That's what we're doing that. with ISIL. And for more than a San year, Diego. American San, athletic coalition San Bernardino very more well. than 60 countries were cutting off oh, their yeah, yeah. were disrupting their plots. Yeah, 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 we're okay. stopping the flow of terrorist yeah, fighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're stamping uh, out uh, their uh, ideology. We've man's had... crazy. There's more of them joining than ever before. They're pouring into ISIS because they know that there's nothing against them but Russia. All right, let's listen to 17 of the great war powers leader. Let's listen to 17. We have to have a patient and disciplined strategy. It's got to use every <laughs> element of our national power. It says America will always act alone if necessary to protect our people and our allies, but... On a lot of world problems, from climate change to Ebola to Iran trying to get a nuclear weapon, we'll mobilize the world to work with us. I can't and we take make it. sure other countries you know, when pull I hear the word own... mobilize, When I hear the word mobilize, I think of Al Sharpton when he was fat with a megaphone. We're going to mobilize. Mobilize, mobilize. That's an old word from the uh, street people. We're going to mobilize. Yeah. Okay, what would you like to call about? Let's go to the calls on the Savage Nation. K-U-G-N in Eugene, Oregon. Steve, what's on your mind tonight? 
Hey, Michael, yeah, I think you need to consider that uh, those seals, uh, I think there were seals on the uh, sailors, not sailors, they probably completed their mission by dropping off their cargo 